Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here. Welcome back to the channel. And I'm super excited for today's video. I finally get to showcase my Demigod Magic of Dragonite PvP build for the Deadlands. Now this is different from my previous build that I have on my channel. This is more of an all-around Magic of Dragonite build. And I have to say guys, I have never felt more powerful on the Magic of Dragonite in my entire life in ESO. Right now is the absolute pinnacle of mag dk so this build does everything it does duels uh, we duel paying the axe won a million dollar duel against him so that was awesome bgs it performs amazingly this build is the best in open world hands down i challenge you guys to give me a better build to try in open world than this one right here okay i have min maxed everything to a t to my play style you guys may have to adapt it for yours but i will indefinitely go in this build with a fine tooth and comb to show you some of the finer points and every little detail that you guys may be missing or maybe you'll get better at a magic of dragon eye all that's gonna be tossed into this build video so character sheet completely unbuffed we do get up to 6400 spell damage with continuous attack on our back bar with everything completely procced we do get up to 36,000 spell resistance and we get up to close to 30k physical resistance as well <laughs> our critical resistance is 1800 that's plenty high enough our magic recovery seems really low don't worry about that guys this build has infinite sustain i'm not even joking when i say infinite sustain you don't have to worry about mag recovery on a mag dk in this patch if you're stacking into recovery i hate to tell you guys you are playing the class wrong Take it from your boy Horcrux. Do not stack mag recovery on your DK. That is not how you get the most out of your build. Now, we are a Breton. Um, I'm considering that best in slot. We're running the Lover Mundus. Now, I am bitten by a vampire. Just a little trick from your boy Horcrux. If you get bit by a vampire but actually do not complete the quest, you intrinsically get the 150 regeneration for your magic and stamina and health uh, via the pain and suffering i believe yeah pain and suffering cp where you have a negative effect you uh, get these recoveries that's why my recoveries are bolstered and when you put this build together it may be a little bit lower so i'm just pointing out that discrepancy right now we're wearing the bewitch sugar skulls uh it, it's just the best like straight up so when it comes to uh we're gonna go over the skills first now again i have completely min max this i do not see me ever changing this build ever it doesn't matter where i'm going to run this now if you choose to run a different proc set than what i'm running yeah you would probably go back to my deadly strike build but as of right now this has group utility it, it just does everything amazingly well so we're running engulfing flames fossilized running talons because of the power lash changes talons is an absolute muscle on the Mag magic of dragonite flame lash we're running this because of power lash because power lash is completely nutty this patch because of the off balance and then the global cooldown is removed from power lash so you can infinitely power lash people notice our tooltip completely unbuffed is already a 10k whip if that's any indication of how this build is going to perform burning embers and then we have ferocious leap on our front bar fully buffed this is 28,000 on tooltip guys 28,000 so you may be saying horcrux okay cool tooltip numbers i bet your spell penetration is really low look at our spell penetration it is 10,000 i guarantee that's higher than most builds right now Okay, that's without LA Drain or any cute abilities you want to run on this. So, not only is your tooltip super high, but you also have the spell penetration, which factors into the effective damage of the class. So, we're going to go over the back bar abilities. So, we're running Entropy. You need a source of major sorcery for this build because of the potions we are running. We are running the best in slot poisons for the Magic Dragonite, which are the minor heroism pots, which you get, you can make by combining Dragon's Blood. Dragon Drum and Columbine. Yes, they are expensive, but trust me, they are worthwhile on the Magic of Dragonite. So you can either run Molten Armaments or Degeneration here. I choose Degeneration because it is a pretty hefty hitting dot. So we have Coagulating Blood. Notice the cost on Coagulating Blood. I guarantee everyone else's DK build is sitting around 3,100 to 3,200 to cast. Ours is down to 2,900. That's abysmally low. We're running a Restoration Staff on the front bar. Now, you can run a sword and board or an ice staff. I would recommend an ice staff once I go over the sets, but I love rapid regeneration. This is an amazing heal ability and it's used to proc one of our proc sets as well. So we have volatile armor and then eruption. This is the only flex spot you have on this build. You can run wings, you can run race against time, you can run cauterize, but eruption, they change this to a, a toggleable ability, meaning you toss it down and it 
reduces your magicka per second. You don't just cost it with a really hefty hitting like 3500 cast like it used to be. Now every per second it drains magicka. This only costs 45 magicka a second to keep up and it's a hellacious hitting dot. Like this, it says 1700 on tooltip. You get this guy fully buffed. This is like 25, 2600 on tooltip every single second. It hits harder than burning embers. Plus, it's an AoE. Plus, it's a slow. Plus, it does initial damage. It's such a good ability for when you're 1BXing or in small group play. Last but certainly not least on the back bar is corrosive armor. This is our oh crap button. You use this if you're getting super pressured do not run the restoration staff ultimate you're not going to get much out of it to be honest you're probably going to die anyway corrosive armor gives you that tankiness that you need and also that offensive burst that you need for the dk to close out those really hard to get kills now this is the bar setup again there's nothing to change there's nothing to change except the eruption on the back bar is your only flex spot I have tested this build hundreds of hours on the Deadlands DLC, so I know what I'm talking about in every single situation that you could fathom a DK being in, I have been in it, and this build has worked magnificently for me. Trust me, okay? So what am I running? Very first set we're running, a burning spell we use. So we're running the main hand is a sword Durnhone for the dual wool passives. And then our secondary weapon, our offhand weapon, is a mace, which gives you the spell penetration from the dual dual wield skill line with a charge enchantment, uh, excuse me, a, a trait as well. Because charge did get a buff, he got double this patch, so now you're able to run Durnhone and Charge. So the importance of charge is you it increases the likelihood to apply the burning status effects and that's how you get all of your sustain on this build you're constantly 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 applying the burning status effect so you have no need for magic recovery on this build i have nothing in to sustain besides one infused cost reduction on my jewelry so notice we're running a flame and a shock enchantment the reason you want to run it this way because when you're light attacking on your front bar this is not a destro staff skill line or a, a weapon, excuse me, so you don't have like a fireball to hit people with to proc flame damage in your front bar other than your dots. Well, every single time this weapon enchantment procs, it applies the burning sass effect, and the same goes for having a shock glyph as well. This applies minor vulnerability, also increasing your damage on the target you are focusing. So even though these are really small damage numbers, it doesn't matter. You're just playing for the stats effect, and it stacks really well with charge. Now. The back bar we are running with the Restoration Staff of Iron Blood. This is an infused weapon damage enchantment. This helps keep our heals beefy on our back bar. And also when we go offensive to our front bar with our burning spell we procs, this is in total over 1100 spell damage just from this weapon enchantment alone, along with burning spell weave when you go to your front bar. Now you can run an ice staff. I would not suggest the sword and board because you will have a little bit of a harder time to get sustained back if you need it because heavy attacks with dual wield and heavy attacks with sword and board do not net you any magicka it's only stamina so that's why i have restoration staff it also gives you major mending when you complete a fully charged heavy attack which is super good on the dragon knight people really sleep on that buff so other set we're running we're running magma incarnate i finally farmed it I've read this and I'm absolutely in love with the set. So essentially it's a blood spawn proc, it has a really high uptime, but instead of the ultimate regeneration that it gives you, it gives you spell damage instead. The resistances are, are the same as a blood spawn, so that's 3000 resistances, that equates to about 6% worth of damage mitigation. Plus the one piece is absolutely nutty. You get magic recovery and you also get stamina recovery, which any class is going to benefit from those stats. Now our armor weight, our 5 light, one medium and one heavy because we're trying to push our spell penetration and our cost reduction as high as possible. Also, I love to roll dodge. So I'm also, that's a reason I'm running five light is to go so I can roll dodge much, much more often and efficiently. So on the chest, we have heavy. On the head, we have medium. The traits I'm running, I'm running four impenetrable and three well fitted. For me, this is exactly how I like to play. You need the crit mitigation because of all of the critting proc set stand blades out there right now. So you can't get one tap, you know, in case you get stuck in your front bar or whatnot. So this suits my play style. Again, guys, if you want to run ice staff, uh, something of that nature, by all means, swap these to sturdy or just whatever fits your play style. But I wouldn't recommend you have at least, at least 1750 critical resistance on your character sheet, no matter what you do. The other set we're running is Shoes of the Trainee. This is just used for a one piece to give us uh, more maximum health. And then on the jewelry pieces is Iron Blood. We have one infused 
cost reduction. The reason we have infused cost reduction is so our Ash Cloud costs literally zero to cast and maintain. We have infused Void Damage Glyphs on the rest of it because you do not need any more sustain than what you're getting. Please take my word for it, okay? As long as you're spamming your leaps and corrosive while cooldown, you will not run into any sustain issues whatsoever on this build. So we are running Tri Glyphs on the big pieces just for the more health. Now you may notice, wow, Horcrux, you have 27k health. That's pretty low, my dude. Not when Iron Blood procs. Your effective health is through the roof even though it's only 27k health i guarantee this would feel like a 40k health build if you could factor in all the math and all all that fun stuff you guys don't care about into an effective health amount right and then of course the last set that we're running is malakath uh we don't care about crit this just bolsters all of our damage by 16 percent and our it does kind of uh, ruin our critical chance but uh you know whatever who cares so that does it for the gear, that does it for the item setups. Now our CP is going to be a little bit different. Before I get into that, potions you have to have. Let me go over these heroism potions one more time for you guys because these are just so nutty and just so, so good. So again, these act like a tripod, but instead of giving you the health portion of the tripod, it gives you minor heroism, minor her heroism transfer into ult which makes your sustain amazing because of the battle war passive also do not forget the combustion passive was changed to where you get double the resources gained from applying a burning status effect or poison status effect so those are some things to note along with the power lash which i've already mentioned okay and those are the biggest changes to the dk and also the battle war passive got a little bit of a buff as well so it's just a huge buff fest for the dk all around so i went over the weapons and why they are the way they are the sets again magma incarnate you farm this in dread cellar it's it's really not that hard as long as you got a think that knows what they're uh, what they're doing so let's go into the champion points now different from my deadly strike build we're not putting any points in the thaumaturge and the reason for that is this really yes our dots do hit hard but we are not relying on our dot damage nor are we using a dot damage proc set so we removed our points from Thaumaturge and toss them into Deadly Aim, Binding Ores, and Mastered Arms. This is how we get our Leap Tooltip so high is due to Binding Ores and Mastered Arms because it double dips. Again, we have a 27k Tooltip on Leap with 10k Spell Penetration. Use that for comparison on any build that you're going to run with. And our last CP that we are running, we're running Ironclad because it reduces all of our incoming direct damage by 10%. Go into the red tree here so we have survival instincts so while affected by a sass effect your combat skills cost five percent less this is break free dodge roll blocking you need this because i personally roll dodge quite a lot on this build and i'm always affected by a sass effect so not only am i getting the light armor passives to reduce my roll dodge but i'm also getting survival instincts as well further reducing it by 25 percent and then the rest of the points we're tossing into pain drift ug if you are a 1vxer or practicing 1vx or always being pressured this is an absolute must so this is a 20 percent mitigation to damage the more negative effects you have on you again up to 20 percent we have sustained by suffering again if you go and get bits by a vampire you have that debuff on you you still get the health magic and stamina recovery even though you have no negative effects on you all the time this helps your out of combat regeneration and is just a, a a little exploit to further push your game to the next level guys if you're one bxing you need any advantage possible now, we have Relentlessness, being stunned or fear causes you to gain major protection for 3 seconds, reducing your damage by 10%. This is amazing because anytime anyone's ever going to kill you, it's going to be from a stun. And there's a lot of gank blades out there right now, so they're going to in-cap you from stealth. And as soon as they do that and stun you, you get major protection, so they cannot one-shot you. Even running 27k health, I don't even recall a time i've ever been one shot by a sand blade i've taken the full combo many many times green tree the only thing you really need guys is liquid efficiency if you choose to run these minor heroism potions because they are quite expensive it is nice to get these back 10 percent of the time so that pretty much does it guys this is amazing again everything has been min max for you all it has been thought out literally copy and paste this you are going to shrek kids in open world bgs even duels it doesn't matter it's such a phenomenal setup and i'm absolutely in love with it this is why i run on all my streams now so hopefully this helps guys again change it to your build style everyone plays differently this isn't necessarily a best in slot this is best in slot for me 
and I've played this game for seven years, so I know a thing or two about a thing or two. Um, again, patrons, thank you all so much for supporting the channel. Also, my new YouTube community members, you guys are just, just, just freaking phenomenal. Thank you so much for helping me through this whole YouTube venture for the next year. Um, I love my community. I love you guys. If there's anything I do, hit me up in the Discord to improve the channel, whatnot, quality of life. Please let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to eviscerate the like and subscribe button, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Happy slaying.